Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready for your Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. Oh boy, we are at the beginning and actually the end of a month long journey building a knife. Don't worry, we'll get to that soon enough. And this may be the end of the journey, depending on how this goes. Now, if you guys want a discount on all your trad life supplies, use the code Tex Grabner at checkout at Three Rivers Archery on orders over $100. It will give you free shipping. Now, if you're in the market for some high-end hunting ammunition between 30-06 all the way up to 505 Gibbs, check out my friends over at Aria Ballistic Engineering. If you're in the market to armor the front of your arrow, use the code TGO10 at ethicsarchery.com. That will give you a 10% off on your purchase price at ethicsarchery.com. So, this is going to be a bit of a journey. I just got back from Harbor Freight, and I bought, as you can see, a new sander. Now, I still have my ribbon sander that I used in my survival knife sharpening video. And I got a fairly decent deal on it. Funny thing is, for the price of the sander, I could have also bought a cold steel drop forged buoy knife. And I might just do that at some point when I have more disposable income. But when you earn skills, you own them. And I'm a pretty fair hand with making file knives, but I've never tried something this big. Now I just mentioned skills, and this would be much better if I had a forge and forging skills, because this is a horse rasp. It's very hard. It's 1095 steel, and the only downside is it has the file marks in it. What I'm going to attempt to do, without reducing the thickness down too much on my billet here, is to sand out the rasp scoops and the file grooves out of this horse rasp down to a smooth sided billet and then create something along the lines of a cold steel style Natchez buoy knife, or rather a Natchez buoy from cold steel. So while I'm a fair hand with a grinder, and I have made file knives before, this is going to be a journey because I've never made anything this big and I don't know how it's going to turn out. But you guys are going to basically be along for the ride. I'm never above admitting when I was wrong, and I admit to you now that I was wrong. I completely underestimated how much of a pain in my ass this project was going to be. What I should have done, now that I actually realize my own folly, was I should have got some fire brick, created a propane forge, heated this up, and pounded it out into a smooth sided billet and then been able to shape it while it was soft and grind it, the initial grinding. Because for the last couple of weeks, I've been burning through sanding belts like it was going out of style. I've burned up a dozen red belts and three ceramic belts in order to get this horse rasp down to a smooth sided billet. And if I had actually forged it down, I wouldn't have lost quite as much of the spine thickness. I still think that this is going to make a great knife. This is going to be a project of ongoing magnitude. So this is a, not a tutorial. This is not a how-to. I have absolutely no idea what the temper or hardness is on this, as in I don't know what both of them are. I do know that it is softer than a file because when I cut in my clip point and my under sweep, 
I have worked this with the file after I used the cutoff wheel so that I wasn't taking too much off. And when I cut in my tang here on the horse rasp, I used the file on that a bit. And let me just tell you that this was a royal pain in the ass to actually get perfectly square so that it lines up with a guard. You may notice that I have a very bulbous tip here. The reason for that is so that as I grind in an edge that I don't over grind the tip and make it too much of a needle. I have also stick welded in a tang and I actually cut off the back of the file or horse rasp rather and the front of the horse rasp because I wanted to get the most even part on both sides and as you can see I've significantly reduced down my spine thickness which is why I shortened this. I originally wanted to use a big old horse rasp and make like a Natchez buoy style fighting knife out of it but once I actually got to the point where I had all my file marks out of it and all the rasp scoops out of it I realized that I probably needed to shorten it down to stiffen it up a little bit. I'm probably going to put a stag handle on it. We'll see. And the reason that I want to do that is because I kind of want to make it a gambler's blade and more of a dress style fighting knife. But, I mean, I'm not going to say that it wouldn't chop through wood that's about as thick as your wrist because in a battle between wood and steel, Steel should always win. This is tough and quality steel, but if I could start over, which I can't, if I had to do it again though, I would get two horse rasps, forge them down both flat, and then weld them together and forge them into a single but double wide or double thick billet so that I had a good wide spine and then I would be able to work with soft steel, harden it, and temper it, and so on. But I have cut in a notch and put in an all thread tang, and I've got the very beginning of an edge. I mean, this can't end up being any worse than some of the Moln engine knives that I've owned over the years. But I'm also not prepared to say, oh yeah, this is a tutorial because I have a feeling that I'm making the best of what I have, but I'm doing this completely wrong. at least progress. Now remember how I mentioned leaving the tip longer than I wanted it? Well as you can see as the grind lines are starting to show up the tip is migrating backward and looking at the grind lines once I actually get this edge down to where it will be a razor edge that tip should migrate back but still be a very strong tip it's going to take absolutely forever to grind this in because I've only made this much progress and I've been at it for, let's see, three sanding belts worth on my sharpener. This is just a temporary handle here that I made out of a mop handle to make it easier to maneuver this while I'm grinding. I'm waiting on a stag handle to show up because like I say I want this to be kind of a gambler's blade and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use that pommel or not. I've also got a 
little brass cap that I'm thinking I might put over the back of the antler. But we'll see. For right now, I'm sick of messing with this for tonight. And I need to go buy some more sanding belts. done yet but we're starting to look like how I want it to I'm still waiting on my stag handle to show up but so far you have seen me do my final grind with my work sharp and strop the final edge if you're wondering about the band-aid that is because I sliced myself open while hollow grinding in the blade or as close to a hollow grind as I can do because I caught the side of this here 50 grit sanding belt. It's really going to bother me that this doesn't match up with this because when I went working on my cross guard, I found out that it wasn't actually brass, that it was just brass plated, which pissed me off. So still waiting on the stag handle. This thing is stupid sharp right now. And seeing as I've got a lot of sweat, a lot of frustration, and some blood into this project at this point. It's kind of a cursed blade because it's been a pain in my ass since I decided to make it and an absolute money pit. So I'm going to be calling it the Gambler's Ruin. If the Iron Mistress gets to have a name, then I guess this one's gonna be the Gambler's Ruin. The fancy handle has arrived. I drilled it out, packed it with epoxy, before I put in the epoxy, or JB Weld is what I actually used, I bent my all thread tang so that it would line up just how I want it to, filled the handle up with epoxy, filled up my guard with epoxy. It's been setting for a few hours. I should let it set till tomorrow. I don't really care for this fancier pommel, so I'm going to take the cutoff wheel, whack that, then turn this down polish everything up, and provided that this doesn't turn into a catastrophe where I ruin all my hard work, I'll be done. Mm, that was stupid. doesn't seem good. No one can ever say that I don't wholeheartedly fail with absolute effort. And we'll be back to see what I did. Previous plan, complete failure. Good news is, knife is not a complete failure. doesn't quite have the fit and finish that I wanted it to, but I also didn't know what I was getting into when I started working on this blade. It's going to make me mad that this guard isn't the same as my end cap, but we are shaving sharp. And yeah, that was dumb. 
grabbing a hold of a chunk of metal that I'd been grinding on. But mostly I'm cartoonishly durable. Overall, I'd like to say that I'm happy with this blade. I am incredibly frustrated with this blade. So here it is in all its glory, the gambler's ruin. This is, in my opinion, a cursed blade. It has developed its own personality. I did not make it from scratch. You have kind of watched me make it as best that I can film, but I will be brutally honest with you. I am sick of this blade. And now we are going to see if this blade deserves to exist. Now there's a few possible outcomes. And I guess I ought to say why I'm actually doing this. I want to know that I made something real. I want to know that I created something tangible and durable and undecorative. Now normally you'd never do this with a rat tail tang, but we're gonna see. There's a couple possible outcomes. This is gonna bounce off and shatter, or it's gonna bounce off and be fine, or it's gonna stick. Now hopefully it bounces off and is fine long enough for me to be able to make it stick. But I have no idea how this is gonna go. But I guess before I break it, I ought to give you a close up of it, just in case, so that we have a record. And it has dawned on me that this does kind of look like an original Trail Master and the Devil's Reject buoy. Well, I probably ought to quit while I'm ahead. It did stick. And we're still true. We're going to keep going. Famous last words. That's actually pretty wicked. That is really tough industrial belting. I missed my cookie target or my backstop, but it actually stuck in the belting, which is actually why I have it down there to guard away from the posts. That time it hit a little off kilter. We're still looking fine. That was actually a fairly decent miss, and we're still together. Tip's still on, nothing's broken yet. I do want to get one really good hit, or stick rather. Problem is, at this point, I'm overthinking it. I mean, we're still solid, still together. Now I'll be honest with you, I would not recommend this to one of my numerous enemies. I've already got all the tools though, so at this point I practically just have to get a forge. So we'll see how that goes. At least I made something that is non-decorative and functioned through the abuse that I put it through. And I'd like to say that I'm proud of myself on it, 
but also have terrible self-worth issues. So I leave you guys to be the judge of my craftsmanship. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this week's episode of Text Grabbing Your Outdoors because it has been a journey, but I now have a blade with a name of the gambler's ruin. As always, God bless all my sports in America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please got my friends over at 3riversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those involved in law enforcement, you good cops out there. And those who serve in the military are ready to die for freedom anywhere. And thanks for watching Text Grabbing Your Outdoors. And I tell you what's funny, I don't edit to make myself look better when I miss. I edit so that you guys aren't super bored.